Hey, Saints. It is August 29th, 2017. I'm kind of having to talk quiet. Be very, very quiet. Be a haunting rabbit. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot of privacy. Um, today also is the 12th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, in which I lived in New Orleans during that. And I wanted uh, everyone to uh, say prayers, not only for Houston, but for New Orleans, Louisiana, and all of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. Um, I'm coming on here because I wanted to let y'all know I lived in New Orleans for 17 years. And I was born and raised in Houston, Texas, right outside of Houston, actually, in between Houston and Galveston, which is now underwater. I have a friend that is MIA right now, a very good friend that I've known over 20 years. He called me on Friday, um, kind of making light of it, saying it was before it hit, and it was uh, in Rockport, and uh, he said, yeah, he's getting his surfboard, and he's going surfing down in Galveston to catch some good waves. We were kind of joking about it. However, I told him about the dream I had on August 23rd. Um, in which I was on an airplane and the pilot said we who ended up being an old friend of mine said we could not go back I said I needed to go back to Houston and he said no we can't go back and about a week before that I had had a dream about a flood now in that dream I couldn't place where it was it was just me in a boat rescuing some dogs um, so the fact that I had two Dreams, one about a flood and one about Houston back to back in a week. That was something important, and that's why I went ahead and posted it. Um, okay, so let me roll out with a few things that the Lord has revealed to me. Um, this was, I hadn't been on in a few days because my my uh, laptop is always being messed with. Again, I'm just going to try to make this quick before they cut me off. Um Let's see, on, on the 26th of this month, I, I was um, asking the Lord, you know, what he was wanting me to know. Is he on his way? Is he on the way coming? And I specifically asked, is a storm coming? And he said, yes. And I flipped to Isaiah 30, 30. Um, which I'm not going to flip to it right now, but y'all can go look it up. It basically, it talks about the Lord will send lightning and a flame of fire, fire again. Um, okay, when I asked, is he coming? Um, a, I'm in my room now when this is going on. I wasn't outside. A daddy long legs spider crawled across my Bible. I have not seen any spiders in my room. And uh, it was just very strange. I didn't kill it because I think those little things are sweet. I don't think they're technically spiders. However, it was that exact time that I asked that. Is, is the Lord on his way? Is Jesus coming back? And the daddy long legs crawled across my Bible. Not the bed, not the floor, the Bible. Out of nowhere. It came out of nowhere. So the Lord had me look up daddy long legs. I'm wondering what the name, what was the reason for you know, why did they call it Daddy Longleg? Because we know a lot of plants have different uh, names. You know, they have nicknames. Um, I can't remember. I didn't write down what the uh, true name of the Daddy Longleg spider was. But the meaning of them, kid you not, is a harvest man. We are in the harvest. The Lord is showing me. Harvey. Hurricane Harvey is short for harvest. Yes, I know it, what it also means, but he's showing me that it's also meaning the harvest. And he is separating the wheat from the tares. All y'all that are listening that may be, um, you know, uh, in Houston and somehow getting power or being able to hear this, God is calling you into repentance. Repent right now. Get on your knees. And all you have to do is believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins. On the third day he rose, he hung on the cross, he died for your sins. On the third day he rose, and um, he is coming back. And you need to have true repentance in your heart for sinning and turning away from the Lord. 
and uh, he will save you. Just call on Jesus. Um, okay, getting back to what the Lord is showing me. Um, so then yesterday, you know, let's go a day before yesterday. Um, I went into this place. Actually, I'll just go ahead and say it was the gym. I hadn't been working out in a couple of months because I had to move. And the place where I live, I, the gym's too expensive. But I got a free one-day pass. It's the only time I watch TV, y'all. Don't, don't watch TV. I haven't owned a TV in about seven, eight years. Don't want to. It's brainwashing everybody. Zombieville, right? And so while I'm at the gym, is the only time I'll watch it. It makes my workout go quicker. So I watch Home and Garden Network, which is pretty safe to watch. However, as soon as I click on Home and Home Garden HDTV, um, it is um, flea market flip. And all I see is not market. I just see a big flea and flip. And the Lord said, you're going to flee. I'll tell you when. All y'all. We don't have to be worried. We don't have to figure out where we're going. He will show us as long as we stay close to him. Um, and then flip means he's turning things upside down. Those who are last are, will be first. Those who are first will be last. Just like how Satan turned everything upside down. Well, the Lord's going to do a mighty work. And he's doing it right now. Um, anyway, so they were at flea market flip. And the name of the, of the um, town that they were in, or the flea market they were in was a big sign that said, could you not, Stormville. <laughs> um, I had one uh, earplug out of, my, out of my ear to listen to the music while I was watching the TV. And the next song that came on was, it was actually the first song I heard when I got on the machine was White Wedding uh, by Billy, Billy Idol, which I used to like back in the day. It's a nice day for a white wedding. And the Lord said, we're about to go. We're invited to the wedding. Um, then the song Hotel California came on. Um, basically, you can check in, but you can't check out. This is, he's telling me about the fallen are all over. They're wanting out, but they can't get out of the pit. And so they're trying to take as many to hell with them. Um, okay, then I had a fallen come into the gym. Um, I have a lot of gang stalkers that come in, you know, come around me. I don't even pay attention to them anymore. However, this was not a regular person. This, I believe, was a fallen angel, dressed all in red, got onto the machine next to me, and had earplugs in, and was uh, whistling. Well, whistling used to be a thing that would activate me. It doesn't anymore because the Lord deprogrammed me, praise God. And you targeted individuals out there. There is hope for y'all to get out of it. If you seek Jesus, he will deprogram you from these triggers that they used to do to mess with us, get us to sin, or, you know, try to get, get us angry or whatever it is. Um, anyway, so this thing, creature started whistling and whistling and whistling. And it was a creepy whistle. And I just said, Father God, if this is, um, if this is the fallen, sent here to uh, harm me or any of your brethren, um, please please send your holy fire on them. And right when I said that, I'm saying this in my spirit, y'all. This person, thing, creature could not hear me. It was in my spirit. The thing said one word, fire. It was singing that song, I'm assuming, even though I couldn't hear it. That's all it said. Then it got off the machine. And when I got off the machine, it followed me around to the other pieces of equipment doing more whistling. I go into the next room. This is a lesson for you targets. And a man all in red came in. And I, I was the only one in there. This was not a busy time. It was early in the morning on. Actually, this was Sunday. So it was pretty dead in there. And uh, he came in. And instead of getting upset like I used to do, I prayed for him. I said, Lord, he... He, he's a hurting man, and I so and the Lord said, "Shine your light." So I was obedient, and I said, "Hey, how are you doing today?" And he goes, "I'll be doing better when I'm out of here." And I took that as two meanings: one, he's done with his workout, and two, he's out of this hell. And so that kind of shifted the atmosphere, and the creature thing stomped off, slamming, slamming some um, 
weight or something down. I heard like a loud slam. It made it mad. And that was when the Lord said, this is what you're here for. You're here in this final hour of targeted individuals. This is especially for y'all. Of course, the saints, the saints, I believe the targeted individuals are saints. We are angels unaware. Come back down in this final hour to spread our light. People are looking for hope. People are looking for genuineness, for someone that really cares, for someone that shows love. Show love in this final hour, y'all. Show love no matter how hard it is. And then the Lord confirmed it, or gave me a thumbs up, basically, that he was pleased with me because the next song that come on came on after I, um, after I said, how y'all doing? How y'all doing today? Uh, was a song that said, well, there's a light in your eyes that keeps shining. And it was an old song. And I think it goes light all the love that I found. Sorry for my horrible, horrible singing. <laughs> but anyway, and I'm trying to be quiet too. So hopefully y'all can hear me. Shh, whisper. Anyway. Um, okay. I also noticed while I was there, there was a homeless man posing in the window. It is a reflection. He was very, very skinny, basically had no muscles, but he was uh, making muscles. And he walked up and down, up and down. He was ranting about something. I couldn't hear him. But when I came out, he disappeared. And I believe that that was the demon recognizing um, you know, the Jesus and me. And that's why targeted individuals will have a lot of freaky things. Like, um, you know, like I've had people say my name, growl at me and things that don't even know me. And I'm wondering what's going on. Well, the Lord showed me that's demons in them that recognize Jesus in us, just like the demons knew Jesus. And remember, what he, he, they knew Paul too. They said, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, but you, I don't know. When the Pharisees were trying to cast out demons. Okay, so again, with getting back to the wedding, that same day that a man walked by, right after I heard white wedding, I asked the Lord, Lord, does that mean I'm invited to the wedding? Are we about to go? And a man rode by on a bicycle right then. Um, and his shirt said W-E-D. I'm believing it actually probably said W-E-E-D, but the way it was crinkled up, I could only see one of the E's, so that was wed. And then, kid you not, these are all back-to-back -back in less than a five-minute period. Then, um, um, let's see, a car drove by, and the side of the car said Michael on it, like Archangel Michael. And I said, Lord, Lord, am I worthy? Am I worthy? I'm always asking him for signs, even though, you know, we should, we do know in our heart, but it's nice to get signs once in a while. And the screen flashed on the equipment I was working on, approved, just one word, approved. Um, there's a bunch of other things that I'll go into on another video if I have time, but I just wanted to get it across again about Houston. Um, my friend who is now MIA called me Friday, told me that they told him to take half the day off of work. And he was going to go surfing, making a joke. He does surf, though. and uh, But it hadn't hit there yet. So, you know, he was just thinking, oh, he's got an extra half a day off. But he said, yeah, and they're telling me not to come in Monday either. I already knew what it was. Um, I was like, okay, how could they know Friday that it wasn't even hitting Houston? It was in Rockport, right? That he wouldn't be able to come in Monday, right? That's three days later. Because they orchestrated it, y'all. Anyway, so I wasn't real worried about him until Sunday. And I'm not worried because I know, I know the Lord has him. But just to let y'all know, he is really good about calling. He calls me about every couple of days. I have not heard from him since Friday. I tried calling him all Sunday off and on. And yesterday and today. And his phone picks up on the first ring. So y'all say prayers for my friend as well as all the people in Houston. Um, all the people that are in the path of basically the evil, the fallen that are running our government and our world. Um, today for, this, for the dream this morning, um, I can't really remember any details. All I remember is one dream I was picking out a pretty dress, which I believe that's for the wedding. And the other dream... I had a bill. It was like a ticket, I guess. 
I think it was from a restaurant, and the number on it was 24. And uh, so I was like, okay, what does 24 mean? Well, of course, uh, the 24 elders. So I looked up 24. 24 means priest. We will judge. We are judging angels, y'all. Saints, targeted individuals. We are judging angels. We're going to judge the fallen. Okay? Um, there's a lot of other meanings to 24. And 24 is a spiritual number in the Bible. Again, we know about the 24 elders. Um, 24 is also a derivative of uh, 12, the 12 tribes, twice. But then I decided to count 24 days from today, which is the 29th. Again, 12 years since Hurricane Katrina, 24 days from today makes it September 22nd. Could this be God's, God's sign? I don't know. I'm not a date setter. Nobody knows the day or the hour. However, we know the season. Um, the Lord also guided me to, uh, let's see, Hebrews 11. Just a second. Well, first, let me see.